a UFO abducted a young boy and took him to a distant planet. Years later, the child returned to Earth, equipped with newfound knowledge, only to discover that the world had changed dramatically during his absence. This is where the film's action picks up. The story begins on July 4, 1978, in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, during the Frisbee Dog Championship. David Freeman, a 12-year-old boy, is with his younger brother Jeff, who teases David's dog Bruiser for not winning the competition. Their parents, Helen and Bill, try to calm their bickering sons, but the siblings continue to exchange insults. After the competition, the Freeman family returns home, leaving Jeff to play with his friends. As night falls, Helen asks David to go fetch his brother, who is too young to walk home alone through the woods. David, reluctant at first, agrees after his mother promises a family dinner and fireworks. With Bruiser by his side, David heads into the woods to find Jeff. As they venture deeper, Bruiser begins acting strangely, barking at something in the distance. David notices a strange light in the trees and continues to investigate. Suddenly, Jeff jumps out of a tree, startling David. Frustrated, David brushes him off and follows the barking Bruiser to the edge of a ravine. Peering into the darkness, David loses consciousness. When David wakes up, he climbs out of the ravine and returns home, only to be greeted by a woman he's never seen before. Confused, David insists he lives there, but the woman doesn't believe him. He rushes inside, calling for his parents, but is met with unfamiliar faces. Assuming he's a lost child, the couple contacts the police. After some investigation, the officers uncover an old missing persons case about a 12-12-year-old boy named David, who vanished eight years ago and bears a striking resemblance to the boy in front of them. When questioned, David insists it's still July 1978, which puzzles the police. The officers take David to visit his parents' new home to clear things up. As they arrive, David is shocked to see his parents, who have aged significantly. His mother and father embrace him joyfully, but David faints from the overwhelming situation. Meanwhile, in town, police discover a UFO crashed into a power line, prompting NASA to send Dr. Faraday, who is astonished by the sight. David wakes up in the hospital, and his father, Bill, asks him where he's been all these years, but David is adamant that he came straight home after finding Jeff in the woods. Suddenly, an older Jeff enters the room. David is stunned, as the Jeff he remembers was much younger. Jeff apologizes for scaring him that night in the woods, explaining how he blamed himself for David's disappearance. He also reveals that their parents never gave up hope and continued to believe in a miracle. Jeff then tells David the shocking truth. It's now 1986, and eight years have passed since that fateful night in the woods. David's parents return to his hospital room and inform him that doctors want to keep him for a few more days to conduct thorough tests. One night, David wakes up and tells his brother, Jeff, that he hears a voice in his head calling him. Jeff reassures him, insisting it's just a dream. The following day, an alien spacecraft arrives at NASA's base, and specialists discover that the ship's surface is completely seamless making it difficult to access. Meanwhile, scientists monitor David's brain activity and are stunned to see that his brain is transmitting vast amounts of data in binary code, which then translates into the blueprints of the mysterious spaceship. These findings are sent to NASA and Dr. Faraday quickly approaches the Freemans, asking to take David for further study. Bill refuses, not wanting his son to be treated like a lab experiment. Faraday persists, questioning if they don't want to know the truth about where David has been why he remembers nothing, and why he hasn't aged. Faraday then asks David directly if he wants answers. After contemplating, David agrees to spend 48 hours at NASA's research center. Upon arrival, David is placed in a room filled with toys. An intern named Carolyn Maddams introduces herself and shows him a robot that delivers food. David asks why his favorite TV program isn't on, and Carolyn explains that it has been off the air for years. She plays music videos which David has never seen before, surprising Carolyn, as she doesn't know what he's been through. Curious, she asks David what happened, but he can't remember. Realizing she's prying, Carolyn changes the subject and promises to bring him something nice for breakfast. The next day, Dr. Faraday lets David call home to reassure his family that he's safe. Afterward, Faraday and his team conduct new tests, attaching sensors to David's head. When Faraday asks David what happened after he fell into the ravine, the computers begin malfunctioning, overwhelmed by the massive amount of data coming from David's brain. Yet, David remains clueless about what happened. One of Faraday's colleagues asks David to say his name, and the computer responds faster than David can speak. Astonished by this, the researchers press him for answers about the past eight years, but David, frustrated, repeats that he doesn't remember. 
However, his brain tells a different story. The computers display information indicating that David had been on a distant planet called Fawn, 560 light years from Earth. The scientists are shocked to discover that David traveled faster than light, spending only a few hours on the journey, while eight years passed on Earth. Faraday, stunned, asks where Fawn is located, and David's brain provides a detailed star map, revealing uncharted parts of the galaxy. Faraday, in disbelief, whispers, My God, these are unknown systems. The boy watches in terror as the events unfold. He tears off the sensors and escapes, realizing that Faraday intends to keep him at the facility for much longer than originally planned. That evening, Carolyn visits David again, bringing the food robot. David admits he doesn't like being there, but consoles himself, thinking he'll be home by tomorrow. However, Carolyn accidentally reveals that they plan to keep him for at least five more days. Panicking, David quietly asks Carolyn to help him escape, unnoticed by the guards. That night, David is once again awakened by the mysterious voice in his head. Soon after, a robot sent by Carolyn arrives and transports him to a hangar where the alien spaceship is kept. As David approaches the seamless ship, an entrance suddenly appears with stairs leading inside. He cautiously enters and the ship's computer begins speaking, the same voice that's been calling him all along. The voice calls David, the navigator, and explains that his brain contains the star maps needed to return the ship to its planet. Just as the entrance to the ship is noticed by security, alarms sound and NASA personnel, including Faraday, storm into the hangar. The ship, sensing the threat, breaks free from its restraints and prepares for departure. David asks the computer to take him home, but the computer doesn't know the way and waits for David's guidance. Flustered, David suggests flying 20 miles from the base. Misinterpreting, the ship shoots upward, leaving the onlookers astonished. Faraday rushes to the communications room to track the ship's movement. David manages to correct the command, bringing the ship back to Earth and flying forward 20 miles as he intended. The boy then asks why he was taken to Earth. The computer explains that it was collecting biological specimens for analysis on the planet Fawn and accidentally chose David. According to the inhabitants of Fawn, humans only use 10% of their brains, so the computer uploaded all its star maps into David's brain. However, it lost the data after encountering a high-voltage power line, making David the only one who could help it return home. Furious that the ship took him from his family for eight years, David demands to be returned home, if not to the past, at least to his present. Just then, NASA helicopters appear overhead, and the computer, named Max, promises to take David anywhere once it regains access to the maps in his brain. They disappear from NASA's view, escaping without a trace. Curious, David asks the computer what to call it, and it introduces itself as Tri-Action Drone Ship. David decides to call it Max for simplicity. He then suggests hiding from NASA, and Max dives into the ocean, leaving David in shock. Once safe, Max begins extracting data from David's brain and opens a compartment containing numerous alien creatures collected from different planets. Amid the terrifying beings, David finds a friendly alien called a Puckmarin, whose planet was destroyed in a comet collision. He then asks Max to take him home. Meanwhile, back at NASA, the radar loses track of the ship. They realize they've just lost two of the most significant discoveries of the 20th century. Suddenly, David's father calls Dr. Faraday to ask about his son, but the doctor doesn't admit that David is missing. Meanwhile, Max finishes downloading all the necessary data from David's brain, including some useless information, and starts acting more human-like. David and Max get into a heated argument about who is smarter. Feeling insulted, Max lifts the ship high into the air and suggests David figure out how to fly it on his own. Panicking, David fumbles around, searching for controls as the ship enters free fall. Faraday, tracking the ship, realizes it's out of control and about to crash. Luckily, David presses the right button just in time, and the ship ascends again. As David continues piloting, he discovers it's not as difficult as he feared. Meanwhile, Carolyn goes to the Freeman family and informs them that David has escaped on an alien spaceship but she is quickly found by NASA officials and taken to their headquarters, where they demand she reveal the details of David's escape. Meanwhile, David and Max suddenly find themselves in Tokyo, where excited crowds film the UFO. Shortly after, they fly over San Francisco, but eventually, they realize they're lost in Texas. They land and ask some locals for directions to Fort Lauderdale, but the people panic and flee in fear. Curious about the sounds he heard from the people, Max asks David what it was. David explains it was music, and Max immediately wants to hear more. David tunes the radio and soon they pick up some music, much to Max's delight. 
On every news channel, reports of the UFO dominate the headlines, with researchers noting its return to Florida. David convinces Max to stop at a gas station so he can call home. As curious onlookers gawk at the hovering spaceship, David calls his brother Jeff, who warns him that NASA agents have swarmed their home. David asks for directions, but Jeff's descriptions don't help, so he promises to send a visible signal. As they approach Fort Lauderdale, Jeff climbs onto the roof and launches fireworks. David and Max spot them immediately. Feeling relieved, David bids farewell to Max, admitting that he's enjoyed their time together. However, just as he prepares to tell his friends about the adventure, he remembers they've all grown up while he hasn't. Max offers to take David back eight years, but warns it's extremely dangerous. As they near David's home, he sees NASA's vehicles and realizes he can never live a normal life with them hunting him. Determined, David steps outside the ship, but quickly realizes that he doesn't belong in the present anymore. He tells his parents goodbye, returning to Max and asking him to attempt the risky time travel despite the danger of vaporization. Max warns him again about the risks, but David insists, fearing a lifetime of being pursued by NASA. They say their final goodbyes, and the ship embarks on the perilous time jump. Moments later, David wakes up in the same ravine from 1978. He rushes home and joyfully reunites with his family, who have been anxiously waiting for him. The Freemans leave for dinner, and David, filled with love, tells his parents, dog, and even his annoying little brother how much they mean to him. As they walk, Jeff notices an alien creature, Puckmarin, peeking out of David's backpack, but David asks him to keep it a secret. During the Independence Day fireworks, David catches a glimpse of Max in the sky, signaling goodbye as he flies back to his home planet, Fawn. What would you do in David's place? Would you stay in the future or return to your old life? Share your thoughts in the comments, hit the like button, and subscribe for more videos. See you next time.